Alright. Uh, I have the privilege of being up here and have some warnings. Um, I'm listed as a friend of the couple. So, I'll say that my wife and I didn't know each other before just a couple of years ago. And we didn't know each other in high school. Dane and I didn't know each other in high school, and that was probably good. It was good that my wife and I didn't know each other in high school. Dane and Heidi didn't know each other in high school either, and that was probably good. But Heidi and I, that's a totally different story. Mark was actually my seventh grade football coach, and that was awesome. I have no complaints about that. <laughs> But back to Heidi and I. So, I was young, I was a wee bit brash, and I thought of myself as being quite invincible through high school, maybe early college too. And Heidi will say that she was opinionated. <laughs> and she was loud. <laughs> Heidi's group of friends and there's a couple over there. <laughs> they were actually called by the whole school of a 1,800 kids. They were the click. The click. And my guy friends and I, we sort of hung out with those girls. And Heidi and I clashed a little bit. <laughs> Junior and senior year, I dated one of her friends, and that was not uh, the best situation for Heidi and I to become good friends. <laughs> but, anyway. <laughs> Dan and I met in the fall of 2002. Um, we were both coming to InterVarsity Christian Fellowship at, at the university for the first time. A senior noticed that we were kind of lost, and um, he, he was like, hey, you're new, you're new. Why don't you guys sit together and get to know each other? So we talked a little bit. I'm like, this guy's nothing like me at all. But he's a really friendly guy. I don't know anybody, this is cool. And a couple weeks later, um, we went on a weekend retreat thing and we talked a bunch and he really opened up to me. And um, we exchanged phone numbers. It was, it was kind of, <laughs> it seriously was like a, like a boy meets girl kind of thing. <laughs> I'm like, no, dude, seriously, I'm going to call you. <laughs> and, but a lot of times, I don't know, maybe we're not going to call each other. But we called each other and we started to hang out. And there's actually so many of our friendships. You know, you talk about like a family tree. You can look at a, a friendship tree. And over the last 10 years, this friendship tree that has developed because of this relationship between me and Dane, um, it's huge. And it's amazing how many connections we can talk to other friends about and realize that it all comes back to me and me. And I'm extremely proud of that. Um, we've grown up together in our faith. And um, a lot of times that's a, a really good thing. A lot of times we kind of would just drag each other down because we were so alike in a lot of our thinking. And um, we would talk and spiral downwards together. A lot of times it was girls. We talked about <laughs> girls probably too much. But um, he opened up, up to my family and uh, they accepted him in. <laughs> my family's pretty swell. <laughs> and to the point where one of the highlights of my wedding with Cassie was Dane dancing. <laughs> if you haven't seen Dane dance, you are missing out on one of the just most joyful things in the world. He's so flexible and so quick. Just unbelievable. It's wonderful. So, one great memory I have of Dane is um, I decided we were going to Florida on a spring break during college, and I really had to talk Dane into it. We took my car. And I paid for Dane's whole trip, because I really had to talk Dane into it. He paid me back eventually. 
I paid for the other guy too. I actually had like a running list on a card in my wallet. We'd hang out and go to Walmart or something. I got you, I'll just check it off the list. <laughs> Slowly, I got my money back. We let Dane drive just one stretch. <laughs> he almost killed us. It was the old look in the back seat for a CD and then whoop, there was a guardrail there. I ended up, he was going so slow, that was the problem. We just didn't let him drive anymore. It wasn't that he almost killed us because we all almost killed the three of us multiple times. I ended up getting a ticket in Tennessee for going 90 and a 70, bad idea. One of the great memories though was we were driving through Georgia on our way home and I heard this rumbling. Dane's sleeping in the back. My buddy Lufty's over in the passenger seat. What's that rumbling? We're rocking out though. We have music just blaring. Somehow Dane's sleeping anyway. And I'm like, I turn the music down. That rumbling's still going. I'm like, check out the window. See what that is. I roll the window down. My buddy sticks his head out and then right by goes the tire. It had worn through and just shot right by his head as he turned. You have a flat tire. <laughs> seriously could have hit him but so then we pull over to the side just kind of losing control a little bit pull over to the side into the ditch a little bit and then Dane wakes up what's going on Dane we have a flat tire on our car yes Dane on my car and then as we're fixing it, he's like, man, this is great. I just love this, being, being men, just fixing the tire. I'm like, we're in Georgia. We gotta go the rest of the way home. This is terrible. It worked out. And Heidi, when I would consider Dane a brother now, I would consider Heidi like a sister all the way through. Because you know when you're younger and your sister just annoys you? <laughs> and then you get to that point where you have some really strong dislike for your sister, we had that. But then, you work through it, you grow up a little bit, you mature, and you develop a really solid relationship. We have that now, too. And that's a really great thing. Or I promise you, these two would not be getting married <laughs> Dane is a loving, loyal, deep thinking brother and I just I love him no doubt about it the night of the proposal well no this is before the proposal because this was the proposal to Mark Dane and I were on the phone I don't know how long but it was a long time and I'm trying to give him a pep talk he's got this deadline Set by Heidi, and normally deadlines are not a good idea, girls, just so you know. But believe me, if anybody needs a deadline to make a decision, that's this guy. He was going to be leaving to go to basic training for the Air Force, and he need, she needed a decision. Is she going to wait for this guy, or is she going to just let him go and rip her heart out? But Dane needed to talk to Mark first, and it really would have been better if he did it in person, I would assume. But <laughs> So this night, I'm on the phone with him, he's up in Duluth, and we're talking and talking. I'm like, Dane, you gotta do it. You just, you know, it's not that difficult. Mark's a great guy, he'll understand. So finally, he's like, all right, all right, I'm gonna do it. All right, thanks for the talk, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. We hang up, and I'm praying like crazy, because he's gonna freak out, he's so worried. And then, he calls me right back. Mark didn't answer. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. So we do it again, I get him, get him pumped up. Go on, go on, go on. All right, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna call him. And that, that was not a quick process, believe me. So he calls, Mark didn't answer. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna drive by their house. And I'm gonna see if the lights are on, you know, it's probably 9.30. I know what shows they watch that night. So, uh, I drive by, I'm like, there's lights on, Mark's still awake, 9.30's not that late day, and you gotta do it. And I'm telling him, I'm like, I will walk up to the door, knock on the door, and hand, must hand the phone to Mark. <laughs> no, 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 well, well, maybe we could do that. Well, let, me, let, me try, let me try to call him. So, eventually he called, 
and to talk to Mark. And that worked out. <laughs> so, anyway, now the Lundquists are getting this guy who I vouch for him. He's top notch. I mean, there, there's some other weird things about him, though. His financial plan for their future is firmly based on silver, <laughs> duplexes, and guns. The plan this morning, if he had his way, we would have gone to Shields, because there's a two-day waiting, waiting period if you're going to buy another handgun, so I talked him out of it. His retirement plans, seriously, would be to hole up in northern Wisconsin with a stockpile of weapons, ammo, and food because eventually everything's gonna go and hit the fan in the United States and he'll be safe. But he's marrying a girl and her stockpile is purses and shoes. And you all laugh because you all know it. I know that you two need each other. <laughs> and Brandon made it abundantly clear that you need God. And I wrote that down in here before Brandon said that, so he's just backing me up. <laughs> and it's not a surprise that the scripture that I was given by Heidi to read was about worrying, because we've got a good worrier right here in Dayton. But I'm not worried. This is going to be a successful marriage. But if someone would have told me 10 years ago <laughs> that one of my best friends was going to be marrying Heidi Lundquist, <laughs> I have no idea what I would have done, but I would not have believed them. Especially if they told me that I would consider that friend a very lucky man. <laughs> 